Hey everybody, my name is Malisha McGregor and I'm a developer advocate at Conducto where we make our own CI CD tool that uses Python instead of YAML to get your pipelines built. So you can follow me on the internet, more commonly known as Twitter at Flipped Coding, where you'll learn all kinds of cool stuff like this and VR machine learning stuff. But today I want to talk to you about securing your web application pipeline from intruders. So this is a fancy way of saying we're actually going to implement some security tests. So before we get started, I always like to give the audience a quick overview of what I'll be talking about so that you'll know when you can kind of tune in and tune out. The first thing we'll be talking about are the common best practices in DevOps and what you should already be doing to make sure that your pipeline is as strong as it can be. Then we'll talk about some of the reasons that security gets overlooked in this area. So in the CI CD phase where you're trying to deploy everything, yeah, you'll learn, you'll see why security gets overlooked. And then we'll talk about the intruders or the people that we're really trying to keep out of our web application because they'll do really strange, malicious things that could hurt our product and our company's reputation. Then we'll talk about some of the things you can do to keep them out. And for me, I always like to see examples of different tools implemented so that when I go back to work or my personal projects, I'm able to kind of figure out where to go next just because I've seen it before. So we'll go over a few examples of how you include security checks in these different CI CD tools. And finally, we'll just wrap up with a few key takeaways and some stuff that I really hope you take back to work and just share with everybody you know. So to get started, we'll talk about some common best practices in DevOps, in particular CI CD. The first thing you want to do is always keep your build sizes small. So the reason we like to keep our build sizes small is because we want them to run as quickly as possible. The whole point of DevOps is to make sure that our changes can get pushed to production really fast without needing a whole lot of manual steps in between. So when you have this small build size, you know that whenever you push one of those incremental changes that your build will get out in however many minutes. And one thing you really, really want to make sure of is that your pipeline is the only way to deploy changes to production or really any other environment. There's still some remnants left over from the waterfall method where everything just flows in order and you have the developers push changes and then it goes to the ops people and so on. But now you want to make sure that regardless of who is deploying changes, that they all go through the pipeline. So there's no more NPM published. There's no more just pushing changes to production from your local machine. You have to use the pipeline or else it's not going to give you those benefits that you use it for. And then when you're doing anything with other environments, which likely you are because we all have tests to run, you want to make sure that those environments are in parity with production. All that means is that any other environment you're using should be as close to prod as possible. So if you have a staging environment or some kind of QA environment set up for edge cases, make sure that all of them have really similar data. They're all using the same third party services and dependencies. All of those things should be the exact same between all of the environments. Now, the way that you'll want to maybe implement a few things, like you might set up a free account for some of your third party services in staging, or you might use a free version of a dependency. So there's a little wiggle room, but for the most part, try to keep the environments as similar to production as you can. 
And then this is for my developers. I know how much we love unit tests. They're great. And we skip them so many times before we try to push changes so that they'll just start the build. But really take that time to run all of your tests locally first, just because it'll save you however much time on waiting for a build to finish before you find out that your test failed. So go ahead and just get that out of the way in the beginning so that when you do push and get your changes merged, you won't get those really easy to pick up um, errors. And another favorite for my developers out there and my DevOps engineers and anybody else who touches the pipeline, write some documentation about this pipeline. It doesn't have to be some 10 page essay on why your pipeline is great and how it works. Just a few encode comments would be enough to help people figure out, hey, this is that third party's um, secret key or these are the credentials for that. Just make sure that when you leave your pipeline configuration, when you or somebody else comes back in six months, it's not going to be a big deal to figure out how the pipeline works, why it was put together the way it was, and any of the kind of weird things that just happen with your particular system. Make sure that those are documented somewhere. And now we get to the point of this. So there are so many reasons that security in general gets overlooked, but security in CICD tends to get very overlooked, more so than in any other area. But a lot of that has to do with time restrictions. Right now, not every company has a DevOps engineer or an infrastructure team. There are a lot of companies that just have developers working on building and maintaining these CI/CD pipelines. And that leads to a lot of time restrictions because not only are you now responsible for bug fixes and feature implementation, you have to develop the system that you're using to get those changes to the customer. And that just starts to come to a point where you're like, where can I save time? And if security isn't something that your company is pushing for or the team is pushing for, it'll probably get kind of set to the back and end up in some kind of backlog ticket that you never have time to get around to. So that's one of the reasons. Another reason is that with a lot of these CICD tools, it can be hard to find answers. Every project, every code base is so unique that there are just certain bugs and quirks that come up that Google can't answer. And you have to just dig around, push a bunch of empty git commits to debug your pipeline. And that just takes time. So when you're doing that just to get your code from version control to production, security just it doesn't make it onto the list. And then a lot of times, I mean, how many of you use YAML like on a daily basis? It's, it's not that common of a language. It's great for what it does, don't get me wrong. It's just one of those, since we don't work with it all the time, the syntax is weird. The way that you include different services can be kind of challenging and overall, Nobody just works with YAML on a daily basis in that CI/CD space. And if you do, oh my gosh, you are probably the expert on this stuff. So thank you for existing. And of course, CI/CD doesn't get updated like a code base does. Once you have a pipeline built and it works like everybody wants it to, the only time you'll make any big updates is when you have to add something for a new feature or maybe there's an, I don't know, some kind of compliance audit coming up and you need to get things ready. But for the most part, we don't touch these pipelines very often once they're built. 
So when it's time to add new features to it, we're not quite sure where to start or it's been sitting there so long, the person who made it has left the company and this just adds on more of that unclarity so that when you even think about implementing security, you have this overwhelming feeling of not quite knowing what you're doing and you a lot of people don't want to add security when they don't know what they're doing which is understandable and then just an unfamiliarity with pipelines so devops has been around for a really really long time but not everyone has worked with devops there are still companies that do the waterfall method or you just push changes as you fix bugs it still exists but when you're touching a ci cd pipeline and you're not quite sure first off how it works or where these changes are getting deployed to thinking about adding security tests just doesn't come to the forefront you're just trying to get the pipeline to work like you want it to let alone worry about security. So really the main reason that security gets left out is because we don't have time and we don't quite understand pipelines and how security can be implemented in them. But that's okay because once you finish this talk, you'll see just how easy it can be. But now we get to talk about our friends, the intruders, the hackers, the attackers and how they work with trying to get access to our web applications or how they try to send malicious attacks through different client apps. So the first thing, and maybe the most obvious, is that they just use tools the same way that we use VS Code and PyCharm and all of those other things. They just use tools. There are a ton of free like hacking tools there are a ton of paid services that make it easier for an attacker to target and potentially hack into your application if you're not familiar with any of these tools i highly recommend you check out the kali linux os it comes with basically every hacker tool that you could possibly think of like you can scan people's networks you can check for open ports sql injection attacks you can do so many things with that kali linux os so if you're even remotely interested in the tools that hackers use definitely check that out but getting back to them and how they try to pick at your app they also check for things like misconfigurations so maybe you have a service that you're supposed to use in staging, but for some reason the code got mixed up and it's being used in prod. So all of those secrets and those credentials are just the, the defaults. So you never, first off, never leave any passwords or usernames as the default that they came with. But if you have anything misconfigured, like maybe your user accounts do some kind of weird post update or maybe you have a server that gets provisioned in some weird roundabout way that they could use to bring down your network just be aware that they're looking for anything at all that could possibly be misconfigured and then this one is the one that Honestly, if you find it, it hurts a little bit, but you can still fix it. They do go through GitHub, Bitbucket, wherever your version control is, and just look for secrets. Maybe somebody was testing and they forgot to delete a credential that was hard coded in, or maybe somebody was in a big rush to get a hot fix out and they left the password in a comment or something like that so attackers are looking for these easy ways to get access to your application to your resources and to your data so make sure 
that before you check in any changes to version control, before you hit commit, that there are no credentials, no secrets, nothing that would let an attacker get easy access to anything that you work on. And another thing I mentioned a little bit earlier is that with those Kali Linux tools, you can scan a network for extra ports. So if you have a backend server with ports that are open for a number of applications, and then one of the apps gets updated and moved from that port, please make sure that you close it. Because when you leave an open port that nobody's watching, that's just a back door for any attacker that knows how to use a tool can just walk in and take what they want. And the big one is that they look for any vulnerabilities in your packages. So if you're using anything that needs to be upgraded or updated, you should probably do that because there are whole reports written about how a specific vulnerability works, what they did to fix it, and anything else that would honestly make it super easy for an attacker to take advantage of. So now that you're terrified of attackers and them hacking into your applications because you forgot something, now we can get into what tools you will use in CICD to ensure the security of your app. The first thing, first, if you're not familiar with OWASP, go check them out. They have everything for web security you could probably think of and we'll talk about them a little bit later. But for now, when we're in the build phase of our CI CD pipeline, that means we're getting the code, we're installing any dependencies, and we're about to create that artifact we're gonna to ship to the different environments. But during that phase, we can do some static security checks just to make sure that things like our packages are up to date. And one of those tools is the OWASP dependency check. And it does exactly what it says. It goes through your application and makes sure that your packages are up to date, you don't have any old libraries, and generally it gives you a report at the end saying, hey, you should probably update these things or replace them. And Sona Type Nexus, they make a vulnerability scanner that does something really, really similar to what OWASP Dependency Check does. It also goes through your entire code base looking for any outdated packages, anything that has a security patch that's been released, and it gives you a nice little report at the end. And CoreOS, as you can probably guess, does the same thing as the first two. These are just different tools, different ways you can use them. Like OWASP Dependency Check, it's open source. Co Core OS is also open source, I believe. But Sona Nexus, that is an enterprise tool. Uh, if I remember correctly, the vulnerability scanner might be free, but it's also something that's included with their service if you buy it. And if you want to try to automate a bunch of tests, especially in this build phase, using Gauntlet will make this so much easier because you'll have everything defined just in one file that will execute whenever it's called in the pipeline. And my personal favorite is Sneak. So just to be clear, I have no affiliation with them. They just make a really awesome tool and not only do you get the report at the end, they send you out emails, there's a whole dashboard. It's just really easy to figure out where your security risks are, and sometimes it'll give you tips on how to fix them. So as we keep going, you'll notice that the number of tools will change, but most of the security checks we want to run we want to make sure we run them as early in the pipeline as possible. So now we'll talk about the test phase. This is when your unit tests are being run after your artifact has been built. And in this phase, we can check for those dynamic vulnerabilities. 
In the build phase, we're just checking for static vulnerabilities like dependency issues. But in this phase, we can check for things like cross-site scripting attacks, SQL injection, and a number of other security tests. But OWASP Zap makes it really easy to check for all of these different kinds of security risks, like I mentioned. And again, you get a nice little report at the end. Retire.js, this is another personal favorite. And if you're working on any JavaScript application, I recommend this like as something you should just have in your toolbox. But Retire.js goes through and checks for any of those outdated packages and lets you know. It goes through and checks, like it does a deep check. It doesn't just check what you have in your package JSON. It checks the dependencies of your dependencies. So if you are using JavaScript, this is a really good way to make sure that you aren't missing any of those super underlying vulnerabilities. And Vericode is another enterprise tool that you can use. It has this nice little dashboard set up as well, and you can go run tests and see whatever risks it finds. The delivery phase is when we push that artifact that has been through the build security tests, the test security tests, and we know our artifact should be really good to go. This is when we'll start deploying to environments like staging and QA, and we want to make sure we're not vulnerable to attacks like SQL injection attacks. So we'll implement this SQL map tool to do automated checks of our running application in those environments. And that will tell us if we do have a possibility for someone to inject data into our database that we don't want. And if you've used Chef at all, you've probably heard of Chef in spec. And it basically does all of these security tests where it'll check for, I think, cross-site scripting, broken authentication, um, the SQL injections as well. It basically checks for any type of security risk that it is programmed for. And I, from what I remember, it follows the OWASP top 10 pretty closely. So now that we've been through all of this testing, we know our app is secure, we know that it works, QA has given us the approval to go ahead and deploy to production. So now that we know all of these things are good to go, we can still do a few more tests. But in production, there aren't any automated tools that you'll probably want to run because you don't want to cause issues for your users. So there are services you can use like HackerOne. You can go and place bug bounties for real people to try to hack into your application. And if they're successful, they have to send you some kind of report before they get their payment. And BugCrowd is really similar to HackerOne. So you can post a challenge for anybody to try to hack your application and you might get hacked. Burp is another great tool for this phase, and it does have some kind of automation, but it'll go through and check for everything that the delivery phase tools check for. So like the cross-site scripting, you know, broken authentication, stuff like that. And if you are familiar with Nessus, it lets you check, I think, up to 16 different websites for any security risk you put in your ip address and it'll just do a huge scan on your application to see if it can find any weaknesses so with all of the tools we've covered you have every part of your ci cd pipeline covered for security tests so now that you know about all of these automated tools you can use we should talk about some of the other stuff you can do to make sure that those automated tests will pass. Keep your user permissions up to date. Don't give a customer admin privileges. That's probably not the best idea. So make sure that the users who should have access to different parts of your application 
are the only users that have access to those parts. And if you use any services, any third party services, pay attention to what they're doing with their security because it directly affects the security of your application. So make sure that the services you're using, they keep up to date with any security patches that come out. And again, make sure you don't have any unnecessary ports open because this just gives attackers a back door into your application that nobody is paying attention to. So they can get in there and do a lot of damage really fast, leave and not close that port and nobody will know the difference. So make sure that all of your unused ports are closed. And then with your CI CD tool, a lot of them come with different security features. Do some research and take full advantage of every feature your CI CD tool uses. Whether you're using Conducto or Circle CI or Travis CI, they have different security features that you get just from using that specific tool. So make sure that you know what security just comes built in with your CI CD tool. And of course, there are a few more things you can do to make sure your application is safe. What you want to do is use some kind of IaaS security tool. And basically, this is just something where when those reports come back with all of your vulnerability risks, it automatically pushes that report to Slack or to Jira or whatever other tracking system or communication system you use. That way, there is never that situation where someone's like, I didn't know that these security vulnerabilities were here because the report just ran and I never saw it. This makes sure that the people who need to see the report actually see the report. And just a really, really basic thing that I think most apps just do now is make sure that all of your data is encrypted. Whether you're sending data from the front end to the back end or the other way around, everything should always be encrypted. The data in your database should be encrypted. So if there's anything that you are sending between two or more systems or services, all of that should be encrypted. And check that OWASP top 10 list. If you want to know the top 10 security vulnerabilities for, I think it's 60% of all web apps that can get hacked, go look at this top 10 list. It has things like the broken authentication issue and session hijacking and cross-site scripting and just all of those things that attackers can use to get your data to take control of your server to send malicious content to users make sure that your application at the bare minimum passes the OWASP top 10. and then the fun part if you have time use those same tools that the attackers are going to use so Boot up Kali Linux and try to scan your network. Check your application to see if maybe you can hijack a user session just by taking an access token. Just go through and think like an attacker and try to break your system, basically. See if you can get in there and do real damage. But now we're at the fun part. So we get to look at a little bit of code. So for these examples, I'm just going to implement one security check just to give you an idea of what it looks like. So our first test is with CircleCI. So you might recognize the folder and the config.yaml. But the main thing I want you to pay attention to is this sneak orb. So we have our sneak orb. We come down here. So if you notice, we have installed our dependencies, cached them, whatever. And now we're going to run that sneak scan. 
So what this does is it goes through and checks for any of those vulnerabilities that would be in a static application. And in this case, we're only going to report on the ones that have a high severity. We don't want to fail when we run into issues because a lot of times security can be what holds up deploy to production, which it probably should, but sometimes things happen and you just need to get it out the door. So this is what sneak looks like when it's implemented in circle. If you notice, that's it. That is an entire security check in itself. So you've seen circle and hopefully for those of you that work with circle CI, it looks pretty familiar, pretty straightforward. And now I want to show you Conducto. So this is like the next gen of CI CD tools because you can use Python instead of YAML, which is pretty awesome, but I'll calm down. But basically what you see here, this is our entire pipeline. And after we install, after we do our NPM install, just pretend this is some kind of um, JavaScript application. So we'll install our all of our dependencies and sneak is one of them. And then we'll just run sneak test. That's it. It's just like if you were testing on your local machine in a terminal, just run sneak test. It'll send all of the results to your dashboard there. And if you have it configured, it'll print things right there in the terminal for you. But the important part to notice is that it's right before the test phase and you are looking at all of the dependencies you need. And our last example will be in Travis CI. Oop, if I can get there. <laughs> so Travis is a little bit different because it's more for open source projects and that's really cool. But basically what we're doing here is in this install phase, we're running something like npm install i'll go ahead and put that there yeah yeah we'll spell it out so you would run npm install and sneak again is one of those dependencies and you just run test that's all this is how you implement at least one security check in your ci cd pipeline so i'm really hoping that seeing these different examples between travis and conducto and Circle CI will make it easier for you when you need to implement them on an actual application. So with that being said, we can go ahead and wrap up. And these are a few thoughts that I hope that you take away and can use later. Keep your secrets safe. Don't check things into version control that shouldn't be there. And if you wanna do a quick scan, there's a tool called Git Secrets and it'll go through your entire version history and check for anything that looks like a credential or some kind of environment variable that should have probably been left out. So keep your secret safe, make sure you delete hard coded um, values before you push and commit things. And then when you're going through a really big project update, so maybe you're implementing a new feature or you're fixing a massive bug, go ahead and audit your CI CD pipeline. Make sure that it's still up to date with everything. Make sure if there's any optimization you can do, try to squeeze that in there. But at the bare minimum, take a look at your CI CD when you're making updates, like really big updates to your application. And then of course, Make sure that any tools that you're using in your application have been patched for security fixes. So you don't want to do all of this security checking and implementing these cool different security measures just to be hacked through some little third party application you're using because they didn't do their security checking. So do a quick audit, make sure everything you're using has done an audit of itself. And then lastly, don't be afraid to try new tools. If you've never hacked anything or never seen any of those tools, 
you don't have to use them. Just go look at them. Go glimpse through them. And it might make things make a little bit more sense for when you're implementing these tests and these different security measures in your code. So again, my name is Malisha McGregor. You can follow me on Twitter at Flipped Coding. And if you have any questions, I'll be around for the Q&A. Thank you.